The Columbia River is a huge watershed historically known for its salmon and steelhead runs. Due to stockings, it now produces some fantastic walleye fishing. Ed Iman knows these waters as well as anyone and has a knack for boating lots of big fish. Let's join Ed as he shows us how to tackle this western walleye fishery. Today we're out here on the Columbia River and we're jig fishing. We're fishing in the segment of river above the Dalles Dam. They call this Lake Salilo. We're going to try a variety of different techniques and jigs today to uh, see if we can catch the wily walleye. We're in pre-spawn. We've got a little cold front that's come in today. Probably not the best ideal conditions, but we're going to make the best of it that we possibly can. One thing here on the Western Rivers, we use jigs that are a little bit heavier than what most people are used to. We're fishing in 25 feet of water, sometimes 35 feet of water, and we've got quite a bit of current here. We're right below these major dams. Predominant colors are chartreuses and oranges. <clears throat> Anything that has a green in it works really well. And of course, good old flash, straight nickel, really works well. Today here we're going to be using a blade bait, which is basically your old head and sonar, and we're going to be flutter jigging this along the bottom. You can see that this jig is going to put out quite a bit of vibration, and vibration is sound, and sound travels through the water four times faster than it does through the air. So we got some flash, we got some action, we got some sound, and we got something that looks like possibly a crippled minnow that's working just jumping off the bottom and, and falling back. It looks like it'd be an easy target for Mr. Walleye to grab a hold of. So I'm going to let this jig all the way down and I'll feel it hit the bottom here in a minute. And once it hits the bottom, I'll shut my reel off and I'll show you a little trick about how that works. There we've hit the bottom. Now I'm going to turn that off, shut the reel off. Now I'm going to flutter. You'll notice that I'm holding the rod a few inches above the, above the bottom. That way, I never quite touch the bottom every time. And then if I go right back down there at the water, there's the bottom again. So if I just don't touch the water with the tip of my rod, I've got an idea of exactly how far my jig is off the bottom. With this type of jig, I want to flutter it. So I'm giving a little snap action there and uh, working it along the bottom. Kind of a flat bottom right here at the moment and then that will change as we go into a couple of these humps down below us here. It seems to be that on these humps is where we're catching the majority of the fish. There's a couple of fish on the depth finder right there. See, just right behind that hump. I see something right here. There we go. Get the net, Katie. There it comes. Oh, it's a nice little about three pound male, pretty typical spring pre-spawn male. When they hit these blade baits, they hit them pretty darn good. Pretty nice, typical little pre-spawn male, hoping to find his girlfriend. 